I, I just remember, you know, okay, now it's time for me to hold tight to my bunny and and just suck it up and get through this and then tomorrow will be just another fun day. Didn't realize that what he was doing was wrong. My story starts at, at a church. This church was pastored by my dad. Growing up, there have been a lot of memorable people in my life. Um, you know, my father has always been a huge part of my life. My mother, um, my my grandparents, my my brother and sister, and you know there have been people, um, just mentors and and friends that I've had along the way. And there was Mr. Bob. And uh, Mr. Bob was a wonderful man to be around, and you could tell he loved children, was passionate, and, and loved music. And there were just so many qualities about him that made him like a grandfather to me, or, or like, a, like the cool uncle or something. At the time, I didn't realize it. I was five or six, maybe seven, um, when it all started, but didn't realize that what he was doing was wrong. I didn't realize that, that he wasn't supposed to touch me wear a bathing suit covers, as my mom would say. Um, and, you know, he would only do this on camping trips. We had a, he had a camper, and it was always a blast. We would have uh, campfires and go to the beach or go um, to the pool, just all kinds of fun stuff. But I can tell you that the first time I met this man, I had concerns about him, but he, but he just kind of continued to whittle away at us and created trust and bonds and friendships and relationships. And so it goes to show that even though you are aware that perpetrators are very manipulative, they're great con artists and they'll do whatever it takes to get to what they want. And so they will manipulate and abuse a family as well as the child who is their target. I didn't realize what he was doing was wrong and I didn't realize that um, that it was something that shouldn't happen and it's not natural and it's it's not right, um, that it's against the law. Um, so going into camping trips, I knew, you know, I'm gonna have a blast until nighttime comes and then he's gonna make me take my clothes off and lay in bed while he touches me. Um, and that happened every time I went camping with him. Um, Sometimes it was with my best friend, sometimes it was with my brother, sometimes it was just me. Um, but, it, but every camping trip, it always happened. And then one night, my mom said, you know, if Mr. Bob ever touches you where he's not supposed to, where a bathing suit covers, um, you need to tell us. And, and I, I, didn't, I still didn't understand. Um, I knew something wasn't right, but I just didn't know what and, and why it wasn't right. Um, and so it continued to happen, and and my mom said again one night, she said, um, you know, if he, if Mr. Bob ever touches you, wear bathing suit covers, you need to tell us because it's not right, and it's, it's against the law. It finally clicked for me, and I finally realized that he is doing that. When I go to bed at night in the camper, he's touching me, where he's not supposed to, where my mom said he can't touch me. Um, he's doing that. So... Um, I finally, I finally disclosed to my parents, telling them, um, you know, Mr. Bob has touched me where he's not supposed to, and of course they asked me to, to, um, to be a little more specific, and I said, well, he's touched me where our bathing suit covers, where, like you said, Mom, he's not supposed to touch me there, so, um, you know, they were shocked. And I was really glad that it was dark in the room, and that he couldn't see my face, because I, I could... I was trying to keep it under control as he disclosed things that had happened. And it, it was just a little bit at a time. In fact, his disclosure happened over a four or five week time period. It was like he would tell a little bit and, and he would realize that we were going to be okay and we were going to listen and we were going to believe him. And then he would tell a little bit more. And so you're living on pins and needles. I mean, it, it's hard enough to hear that disclosure um, as a parent. It's like being sucker punched. Uh, multiple times 
and yet you're trying to keep it together for your child and you're trying to listen, you're trying not to ask leading questions, you're, you're just trying to be there for them. All the while, you've got all these things going on inside you. But telling my dad what I had told my mom the night before, um, I mean, it was easy for me because I trusted my dad and I, and I loved him and I knew that he, um, he loved me and still loves me. Um, and, and I knew that he um, was doing this because um, he cared and because, because he was looking out for me. Um, so it was very easy for me to do that and very easy for me to say, this is what Mr. Pop did um, and go into a little more detail. Um, and hearing my dad say, you know, we're gonna get him, that was like, you know, seeing the ocean for the first time or, or watching your first sunset. It was like, my dad says we're gonna get him, we're gonna get him, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's gonna happen. And he was going down. There was no two ways about it. And the, I think the legal community found that out. Um, the attorney that was representing Bob thought he could wear us down and all he did was make us tougher. And it was a real joy for me when the, the final day when he got his sentence and, and Wesley was allowed to read something to the court and his attorney, he and I were eyeball to eyeball, I mean across the room, but you know, we were locked on and, and he knew that I was sending him the message, we got you buddy, you know, you didn't win and, and we, we got you. And, it was a victory for everybody. And so I told Wesley that night that, you know, we, we will prosecute, we will do everything we can to stop him. But I went further with saying, Wesley, you know, you know what else we're gonna do? We're gonna forgive him. Um, because I knew how important that would be in the whole process too, because uh, forgiveness is, you no, know, he didn't deserve forgiveness, that's true but Wesley deserved to forgive him so he could be freed from this pain like he was talking about a while ago. And he needed that freedom and that's what forgiveness does for us. And so from the beginning we were saying, yeah, we'll do all we can, we will put an end to this and we will also be okay ourselves because we'll forgive because this, this is not gonna run our lives. I can list off children that this man had relationships with and had access to who were about to be the same age as Wesley. And Wesley was able to, to stand in the gap and say, look, this happened to me. I'm going to tell my parents. My parents are going to do something about it. And other children have been saved because of that. Other children have been, um, have been protected from this man. And, and why would you not do that? I mean, what in, your, what in your mind would keep you from protecting children? The legal issues took over a year and a half for us to be able to do that. We, you know, that ought not be, that, just drag it out like that. Well, I think his attorneys wanted to make us go away. Right, and, and we wouldn't. Yeah. And, but then, you know, getting back to the issue earlier that, okay, the legal process is finished now, we brought that to a resolution, that doesn't mean that the hurt is finished. Things started to happen. I started getting sick all the time. I started um, having weird headaches. I started having getting just really sick all the time and eventually to the point where I couldn't stay conscious um, all the time. So, uh, my parents took me to the doctor and um, they said, you know, there's something really wrong here. We're, this is something, something's going on and he needs help. So uh, I guess that was when I, I finally understood that like, that this is bad and this is, something's happening to me. And, and I made the connection that it's because of what Mr. Bob did and, and because, because of the, the emotional and the emotional stress that he caused me and the emotional pain that he, he caused um, was why this was happening. And so that began the long, long healing process. You know, it's, we're going, going on 10 years now from, from when he told us about it. And, 
it's still in process. You know, we can look back and see 5,000% improvement in the great strides that have been made, but then, like you say, there's still triggers. There's things that come up and remind you all the time. It's like grief. You know, you get through it, you think you're over it, and then all of a sudden something happens and it draws you back, and, and this stuff will do this for the rest of your life, I'm sure. Well, and I think what I, what I, we saw with Wesley was we saw him look at the, his experience as a child, and then as he became a teenager, he looked at his experience through a different set of eyes. It was painstaking and just grueling, and had, it was a daily battle for a long time. And then, um, then I finally understood that that you know I don't have to to live in this bondage. I don't have to um, to let this man rule my life because he doesn't, and he doesn't deserve that that satisfaction and that gratification. Um, and so, um, the senior. The summer after the senior year of my of high school, I um, was at a church camp, and it was in down in Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, and one night, the pastor um, gave a, a sermon on just everything about sex and biblical um, the biblical background of it, um, what like as it is defined in, in the Bible, and just all every aspect of it, you know, going through what every teenager thinks about and what every teenager wonders about and has questions about. Um, and he was driving the point in that, that sex is not just physical, that, it, that there's an emotional um, aspect to it, a largely emotional aspect. Um, and he, he said, you know, if you try and tell somebody who was raped that it was just physical, that's like slapping in the face. And I, I'm sitting there in the seat thinking, oh my gosh, he's gonna say, the next thing he's gonna say is, if you tell somebody who was molested that, that it was just physical, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I thought I was gonna run out of the building. I thought I was gonna cry. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I, I was so scared and so worried. And, and the thing that hit me the hardest was when he said, um, you know, ask somebody who was molested that and t try and tell them that it was just physical. He said, "Ask me," and he raised his hand. He, and and that blew me away because this is in front of two thousand people, um, and I didn't understand. Like I, I, I wondered so. I sat there for five minutes, just trying to figure out like how can he, how is he able to do that? I can't tell these people around me that that it happened to me. Um, then I finally finally connected the dots and I realized, you know, this man is a man of God and this man has um, spent countless hours in, in the, reading the Bible and, and studying it. And um, it finally clicked for me that he was able to say that because he was able to give it over to God and to, um, to experience the freedom that only Jesus, Jesus Christ can give. Um, and so I realized, I, I, was, I, I told myself, I said, I want that. I really want that because the way I've been living and the way my life has been has been miserable. And it's been a struggle and a battle since this all has happened. Um, I said, and, and I was tired of it. I didn't want it anymore. I was, I was sick of being... I was sick of being sick. I was sick of being angry, sick of being depressed, sick of being having just severe anxiety and stress. I was sick of it. And I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna put my faith in God and trust that He can handle this because He can handle anything, and I know that. It is pretty freeing to forgive somebody. You have to let a lot go to do that. Because, you know, holding a grudge takes a lot of effort. And it takes a lot of energy, and you, you got to hold it tight. And when you let it go, then <laughs> it doesn't take so much. You know, you have to hold him accountable, but we have to be, we are accountable also for who we are. And if I hold hatred and malice in my heart towards somebody, well, I'm not a very decent person myself. And so, you know, there, there's accountability to right and wrong and laws, but then there's accountability to, to who I am as an individual also. 
And, and I can forgive him. Does that mean that I'll ever trust him with another child or that I ever want to see him in the presence of another child? Absolutely not. But I've forgiven him for what he's done to my child and to other children in the past. Mm -hmm. And I finally said, I want that freedom. I want that. I want it. I'm tired of living this way. And um, that night I, I talked to a leader. I said, you know, I was molested and, and when when uh, Perry, the pastor, said, um, when he raised his hand and said that in front of 2,000 people, blew me away, and, and I want that freedom, and I want that, I want that freedom. Um, and he sat there and he prayed with me, and, and I, at that time, at that point, I was just, I lost it, I was weeping, and I, and I knew that this was the turning point in my life. This is where I can start new, and I can really experience the true joy that Jesus has for me. Um, and so I, I was weeping and the point, the part that really just, just hit it home for me was this man who had never met me started weeping for me because, because he cared, because he loved, um, because he knew what God can do and he, he knew the freedom that, that Jesus can provide. And, and he was weeping for me because because I had received that. And it was just the most powerful and the, the turning point in my healing process. And um, you know, since then, it's been a joy. I, don't, I no longer see um, my story, my struggle as a burden, but as, as a passion and as a calling. Um, I can help people through this and I can can show people that you don't have to suffer and you don't have to live this way that there is hope and that there is there is a God in heaven who does care and who does love you and can bring you through the pain and the suffering and and that's why I'm I'm doing this interview that's why I'm I'm doing this is because I know that that, that changed my life and that 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 freedom was incredible and I want others to experience it